Hey, 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 and welcome, welcome to Terry Messenger's Genius Zone. And, you know, this is the place and the space where you are going to get your own free masterclass absolutely free. you're looking at reframing something that may seem like it's so bad and it's so awful and then just shifting it to actually how else can I look at this could I look at this from a different pathway so on that definitely you can more than definitely help if you're doing a fast phobia cure on yourself, no, I wouldn't recommend okay. it. Don't do that at home. So you definitely, if you are going through something that is traumatic and it needs really, you know, that powerful, potent kind of way to get through it, you've got to use a practitioner, definitely a professional. Thoroughly agree. Can I use NLP on myself or do I need a practitioner? Cool well, yeah, it is a really cool question. I use NLP on myself all the time. Oh, look at I'm you always NLPing myself, so to speak. Now, I think what you mean, Roger, is if you are not specifically trained. Yeah, I think that's what you yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it is. So you could use it in a linguistic method so not and a reframing method. Okay, how can NLP help me transform my life? That's a pretty open sort of mm, question. It yeah. is, and I would say in what way. Yeah. However, if we're looking at it the most generalised way, Mandy, I would say through your words. Your words are your wand. So if you can learn that anything you're saying to yourself, anything that you're saying out loud is what is going to impact you. And I mean, this is more than just words of affirmations because words of affirmations don't always work. But what you're telling yourself, what you're saying and putting out there in terms of, oh, this is really, really hard or I've got this. You know, that in itself Mm -hmm. is an incredible way to kind of embrace it from a subconscious level. Radio Australia, time for the Genius Zone. We've, we've run the practice run. What can I say today? I am ready for some absolute genius information because I know what today's show is about and it may as well be called Aaron's Life Story at the moment because it is all about burnout. Uh, yeah, as you can hear from my voice, got a bit of a flu, uh, might be a little bit run down. Uh, we just said off air about the fact that I'm feeling a bit Demi Moore in the voice department here. Absolutely. But this, you like her voice, right? Oh, so much. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. I heard that song earlier, uh, uh, Did a Bad, Bad Thing. And, oh, um, yes. Okay, just I can't tell you how I can put those two songs, that, that song and that voice together, but just trust me on this one. It's a winner. Okay, it's a winner. It is. I thought Nicole Kidman was in a show where they did a bad, bad thing. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Eyes Wide Shut. That if you, is yeah, it. Yes, yes. That is two and a half, three hours of your life you'll never get back. Is it was a not? terrible movie, absolutely awful movie. Look well, at that. Don't go and see that go. movie. Don't, don't switch go. it on Netflix. We are not here to review movies, though. True. We're talking about genius and we're talking about the fact that this is, today, as I say, it's a great topic. It's about burnout. We've got some great questions that have come in too, so I'm looking yeah. forward to answering those. Yes. Edge is obviously very interactive, so if you have any questions, don't be shy. Jump on the socials there. Click away and, and put your comments through. Uh, and if you've got comments, you've, just, you've seen this um, video later on uh, mm. after the show. Uh, hopefully we can cover it next week. So don't be shy. 
That's right. In fact, we had so many questions this week, Aaron, mm-hmm. that we're going to spill them over in the oh, next show. Okay. So it goes All to right. show when you ask... People ask, and and speaking Mm. of asking, you know, this is all about being the master asker as well. But burnout, burnout is probably, like Karen says, this is made for him today, Today, but you're not the only one. No. I can tell you. I reckon Far we're from. picking up the energy from the other side of the world. There must be a little bit of a kickback, you know. Do you think? I absolutely do. And, I mean, the coaching space is rife with it. Right. So if you're an empath or you are tuned in and tapped into the universe, mm-hmm. you're more likely to feel the effects of what's going on over in Gaza and all of those places and Russia because there's, it's just, I mean, how could hurricanes, and wars and everything go on without us getting somewhat touched. Interesting you say that because, I okay, years ago when people would talk about energy and, and people feeling others' energy, and I would, I'm not going to lie, I would glaze over. I would, oh, yeah, here we go, hello. Let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya, right? I did not believe in that sort of thing. Now that I've lived a, a longer life, okay, and I've experienced a lot of other things and I've actually opened my mind uh, mm-hmm. and spoken to people who have got these experiences, oh, my word, it is bang on. Like I'm, I'm so hooked into this energy thing because mm-hmm. it is it is relatable, it is real, and it happens. So especially if you're a, a person who is – well, well, basically – you have any empathy in your life? Uh, a lot of people don't. Um, you know, some in people. In some ways, they're lucky. Oh, do you think? I do. I don't know. Yeah, I, I yeah, don't know, I don't yeah. know if I ever feel that a sociopath is lucky, but okay. Uh, I but you know, people. Some people feel it far stronger than others. Mm. But I think that yeah, your empathy is one of your strongest sort of. Well, the strongest parts of of you really, because you yeah. need to be able to understand how other people are feeling. True. Um, yeah, to get through life in in a mm. meaningful way. And I guess it's a bit like what we're going to talk about today Mm. and that is where there is a high, there's a low. Spot on. I've got a friend who is so energetically in touch that if she goes out where there's a lot of people, she gets Mm. a blood nose. No way. She does. Okay. Okay. And she just says too many people, too much energy and she's picking up. Right. She's picking up on the vibes. So one can only imagine how she's feeling right now. Oh, I thoroughly agree with you. Um, it's uh, like I've got a mate who's a big, burly fella, okay? Uh, he is, um, I always give him a tease and call him a Slav. Uh, he's, he's Croatian, <laughs> so, you know, because yeah, we're old mates, so we get away with giving each other a bit of a rib. But it's so interesting you say that because he has that sort of effect when he gets into crowded places and he just feels the energy coming off other people. Now, Amazing. why why I mentioned him is because he is stereotypically, to look at him, to speak to him, you would think, no way this guy feels this way. This guy's rough and tough and tumble, right? Okay, And you wouldn't think he'd be switched on to other people's energy, but he truly is. And yeah. it's so noticeable when you go into a crowded place. Nothing yeah. like... Bogan spiritual people. Ooh, I mean, they're, they're the best. That, that could be a, a complete category. I yeah, like. All right. yeah, absolutely. So here we go. So, Let's do it. you know, burnout is something that I'm very familiar with. Mm. And interestingly enough, Aaron, and I think you'll be able to relate to this, I was really driven, and I am really driven yeah. by success. Of you know, course. I'm a really high achiever. And with high achieving, personalities doesn't mean to say you achieve greatness it's just that you can be a high achiever without achieving greatness Um, but you're kind of aiming you are aiming so that comes under expectation okay so if your expectations are really high Mm -hmm. and then you get disappointed that can be like really hard you know because you're kind of aiming for the stars but if you're expecting a lot then you're sort of getting this kind of crash this disappointment that it's not going the way you want it to and you know this is where the whole letting go, releasing, surrendering sure. kind of comes into place. And you can be a high achiever, but as I've learnt, drop the expectation. Really? Drop the expectation. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, we're going to tackle the first, you know, key point today, which is burnout is not what you think it is. 
All right. Okay. I am all ears. I've taken the headphones off. I am yeah. all ears on this one. You did. I, I, believe me, I, I, when I saw that you put this together, I'm thinking, like, are you reading my mind? It's been a, a really hard couple of weeks for me. And I'm not whinging mm. about it. It's just the, no, the fact that um, you know, some physical things have happened. I've had some health issues. That and a massive, massive workload. Yeah. Um, and a lot of pressure is coming from And you just think, I can't. Like, I just, oh, not I can't take this anymore. I haven't felt that. But I don't want to take this anymore. I want a yeah. break, you know. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. So, um, when I saw this, I thought, like, honestly, I, I'm I'm so curious to hear NLP techniques, mm -hmm. your thoughts on this, others' yeah. thoughts on this. I'd really yeah, yeah. say, I love yes. people pop their opinions up because I don't want to hear about this. Yep, um, absolutely. Because you know what, I'm a big believer in uh, like a problem shared is a problem halved. Um, it is indeed. Yeah. So, if and it, and also, the more you know and understand about the problem, yep. and you acknowledge it. That is also half solved as well. So, totally agree. Um, you know, when I had my first kind of burnout, mm -hmm. I was about 27 years old. Okay. And it was, I don't do things in half measures. I mean, go hard this, or go home, yeah, right? that's yeah. it. And, and it goes for everything. And in this case, I was in real estate and I remember it was an Easter weekend and Everybody went on holidays. All the real estate agents That's went what on. Real estate does. And what did I do? I was out there working. I was out there opening houses. So guess who got all the sales? Oh, hello. Even without not my own listing. Yep. So I think I signed up something like six houses on that weekend. Good weekend. And on Sunday, something really strange happened. Okay. I was in a home open and a guy walked in and usually I'll, hi, how are you going, you know, have a look around, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I went to talk. Nothing happened. What? Nothing. Like I couldn't string my words together. Really? I couldn't. And I'm like, what the heck? But it went down. I went down a slippery slope and I couldn't even brush my two-year-old daughter's hair. I became that dysfunctional. Wow. Long story short... My husband, my then husband, took me to the doctor and I felt like I was a fly on the wall. Okay. You know, like the doctor was saying to my husband, oh, no, you, you can't take her away on holidays because he's like, what should I do? Should I take her away on a holiday? No, she'll be a stick in the mud, you know, and he was right. And he goes, well, when's she going to snap out of it? Because he was used to me being, you know, really. Vibrant and yeah, full vibrant of life. Yeah, vibrant and vivacious and all the rest of it. And he goes, you're looking at five years. Whoa. And I heard those words and I think that motivated me. Okay. Because in my mind, even though my body was like totally burnt out, mm -hmm. my mind said no. So I got over it in about six months. But okay. whilst we blamed work, work may have been the situation, right? Sure. But it was the fact that I wasn't keeping my focus on what I was really good at doing and I was hopping all over the place. Okay. So I was doing this and I was doing this and I was doing this, but it wasn't work's fault. It was the drivenness of behind what was going on for me okay. that caused me to hop around like a rabbit. So you're half then, doing everything, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So okay. you're watering down, you're watering yeah. down your... And you if know, you're your a driven power. person, you want to do everything to the absolute best of your ability, right? You do. So you, and I mean, I, okay, I'm just going to speak for myself, but when I am not achieving the goals that I have set for myself, I get angry at myself, I get mm. disappointed with myself, I get frustrated with myself. Yeah. And these are not productive That's traits expectations, or feelings. That's expectations, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So does that get you down? Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. that's what, you know, gets a lot of people down because you have got high expectations when you're a high achiever. But just because you may be working hard, the fact is you might be working hard mm -hmm. because you're running away from something. I think that is so common. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if you can pick up the mirror and look at yourself, yeah, of course you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it doesn't yeah. mean to say that it's not our zone of genius. No, no, not at all. So, you know, you may be in your zone of genius, but if you are in a position where you're burning out and you're going, oh, I'm working too hard, this is happening, that's happening, you know, you've got to ask yourself, well, is it really this? Am I just totally putting my whole life into this mm -hmm. because I'm running away from that? Sure. And when you look at what the suppressed root cause of it is, yep. what that happens is it allows you to come back into your zone of genius, 
but come back in a way that is totally unstoppable. Okay. Unstoppable and, you know, resilient and focused. Okay. Let me ask you this then. What if those things that are holding you back, right, or, or those things that are causing you to focus in other directions are things that are completely out of your control? You can't change them. Well, that is a very good question. And that is a lot to do with letting go and that's a lot to do with releasing. So I'd love to get an example if I could. I don't know whether we've got a question on here. Well, your phone that's is happy Siri. getting involved in the conversation. I hey, know, Siri. right? How and, you going? and it's not even turned on. Look at that. Oh, so, yeah, so watching. what happens if you are facing something that's beyond your control. That's sure. the question, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that your question? Yeah. So, yeah. okay, because I thoroughly agree with mm. you, right? Okay, the whole, because uh, I know because I do it, right? And I'm completely aware that I do it. So I throw myself in a thousand, and I'm going to side note on this one, right? This is something I want to change about attitudes in Australia. Yep. In Australia, we tear the tall poppies down, right? Yep. We have a go at people who want to succeed. Mm. I want to stop that. I want, you know, this is something actually, if you want to take goods and bad bits from different nations, take the good bits away from America. I mean, they, they absolutely support and charge up, you know, everybody yeah, yeah. for any reason. Yeah. But uh, they don't have the tall poppy syndrome. We have that here. So I really want to stop that. Yeah. Because... I, don't, I think it is extremely negative to people on a personal level, on a social level, to a um, society level, mm. to keep tearing people down because it stops them wanting to achieve. And I yeah. think achieving is really important, yes, right? Yes. So that that's one side of it. Yeah. The other side is I'm aware that the things that I work really hard on is for very, very clear reasons in my mind, and that is because I am running away from something else. So by distracting yeah. myself from that... In my yep. case, it's a pain mm. situation. Mm. So by distracting myself away from pain, mm -hmm. I do that by working my absolute butt off and can be completely focused on the success of, of what we're doing here, right? Yeah. Because I can't change that pain because I have no power to. So what if you could change your perspective though? Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, so that is a huge one, especially in the NLP World. And yeah. you might be going, well, how on earth can you change a perspective if someone just murdered my best friend mm -hmm. or took away something in my life that has devastated? How can you change the perception on that? And it, it's a, you know, this is the reframe. So if you can reframe, and this is where we say turn your pain into your power. Yeah. So if we could say like, for example, if you're going through something really, really tough mm -hmm. and you're really fighting against it, you're getting to that level where you're burning out, yep. then, you know, what you've got to say to yourself is, how is this going to serve me for the greater good in the future? So what if I told you that that higher power up there or mm -hmm. God, if you believe in God, is actually allowing this to happen to you? And it's happening for you. And it's happening for a reason that is bigger than you. It's much bigger than okay. you. And my answer would be that's how I've embraced it, okay? That yeah. I, that's exactly how I've embraced it. I've thought, okay, you know, what well, there's adversity has been thrown my way, mm. has been thrown uh, my way to test if I'm made of the right stuff, right, yeah. okay? Uh, because quite frankly, if life is very easy, you cruise through and, you know, you, you don't have to. You don't have to push. And you don't know your limits, mm. uh, you know. The, 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 there's because I can turn anything into a motorsport reference. Like, okay, okay, the drivers who go out there, okay, in rallying and never have an accident. You know what? It doesn't mean they're good. You know what it means? It they're means careful. They're, they're careful. They're driving under their limit, <laughs> right? The guys who are good are the guys who fall off the road here and there, right? Because they are always looking for the limit, and it's mm. so important. You don't know your limits until you push them. And that, yeah. whether it be motorsport or anything in business, with your, your personal life, whatever, you've got to, in my, how I'm wired, mm. you have to push your limits. Otherwise, you don't know who you are. You don't know what you're about. And and, and you don't know what you can achieve. If That's you play amazing. safe all the time, you're never going to achieve anything. That's one of the best metaphors I've heard in a long time. Okay. And it's true because I've never thought of it like that. But when you're talking about pushing through the upper limit, yep. You've got to go outside yourself. You've got to push yourself. You you've, got to, you've got to kind of go through that 
comfort zone, mm. if you will, to reach your genius zone. Oh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think life needs risk, okay? I mean, not mm. being stupid about taking crazy risks. Yeah. But if you're not pushing the envelope, then you're, you're just – I mean, you're living a very, very safe life. And if that's you, if that's what you want, knock yourself out. Okay? Yeah, mediocre. A lot of people oh. do like mediocre because it, they feel it's safe. Yeah, but you're not going to get torn down as the tall poppy. Mm. You're not going to do it. You're just going to sort of go, you know, float along in life. Yeah, but, okay. I, we, we had uh, Come Fly With Me uh, earlier. We were talking about, you know, up in Durian Bay and um, the um, skydiving and that sort of thing, right? Like everybody should do something like that in their life, right? I believe because so. You, I mean, I'm just using that as an example because, quite frankly, you can go pay the money, you can go through the course, mm. and then they'll throw you out of the side of a plane, right? Perfectly good <laughs> plane. Uh, so you kind of you get there and you've, you, I mean, you could change your mind, but it's a difficult thing to change your mind. But I think... It teaches you different barriers. It teaches you, hang on, you know what, because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of heights, right? I mean, I was up yeah. on a ladder moving this light uh, <laughs> last night or yesterday afternoon and uh, you know what? Oh, I'm shaky. I'm not liking it, right? Oh, gosh. But I quite happily jumped out of a plane at 15,000 feet. I was going to ask you if you've ever, ever done that. Yeah, yeah, I took the big one. I did the big one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I, I dropped head first out of a plane. Wow. I mean, it, like I had a terminal velocity of 250 kilometres an hour head first towards the earth. Mint, right? Okay, let's go all ladies on you. Really good. What I'm getting at is I'm scared of heights. I was up four things oh, on a ladder, five yeah. things on a ladder, and I don't like that. But by pushing myself, you learn so much more about yourself, okay? You open up yes. another door. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, that's one way you could do it. There's all sorts of ways you could do it. And yeah. it, there are accessible ways. Um, you don't have to, like a lot of people take the easy option, take drugs, things like mm. that. Yeah. To me, that's not yeah. the path, yeah. right? That's you not know. the way out. Yeah. No, no, no. But I just, mm. and it could just be at a spiritual level. It could be at just yep. whatever an emotional level. But opening yourself up to, and well, just opening another door and another door, and you will find your limit is far higher than what you the limits you place on yourself. Yeah, but you or, just got to break through it. Yeah. So I've probably told this story before, but Bandler encouraged yeah. what you just said, right. throwing people out of planes when they were stressed because you're not going to be thinking about your problems no. as you're free falling, right? Yeah, that's right. You, you are go. not going to think about what you're having for lunch tomorrow or no. who just dropped you or totally, yep. you know, devastated you. You're going to be thinking about, whoa, yeah. <laughs> am I going to survive this? Or he'd put them on a roller coaster. Oh, yeah. Anything because what it comes down to is Lose your mind and come to your senses. Ooh, I like that. Mm. I like that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, you know, I just think that, uh, like, adrenaline and, um, look, I, I think it's like, okay, like what we do here, okay, or if I do a live gig, I think that when you pick up the mic and you speak, there should almost be a little bit of nervousness in your voice the moment you, you arrive because it means something, right? Exactly. Like, you just, yeah. you've got to, like, vulnerability is kind of cool. Right. It's leadership, yeah. vulnerability, yeah. Okay. Cody Sanchez. Right, there you go, there mm. you go. Shall we jump into some of the questions? What yeah, think? I think so. Um, the way to turn your pain into your power mm -hmm. is what I just said. So I did okay. cover that. So looking at something beyond your control, you've got to look at it how it is bigger and better than you and look at it from zoom out. Okay. If you zoom out completely yeah. when it's beyond your control and look at, well, what could this have to do with my future? Okay. How can my future benefit from what the heck I'm going through now? Mm -hmm. Let's face it, they don't put people into the army without getting them to go roll through the oh, mud. Yeah. And they put them through all of that real high, elevated, adventurous, scary stuff. Of course they do. And the same as a police force because greatness is not made out of cotton wool. No, it's not. No, it's not. I've had many friends who've worked in the forces and, you know, the, the, some of the stories they've told me about basic training, about what they go through, mm. it, is, it, it is really to teach you your own, to, for you to reassess your own limits, I reckon. Oh, I love that. It's like we've already practised rehearsed this. <laughs> we never rehearsed anything. Come on. Yeah, yeah I know, uh, right? Yeah. Just roll up. Uh, on that front, may I grab that mouse from you, please? Yes, 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 yes. A bit of an idea. So, all righty. We're going to look at any comments coming through. If you've got any questions, guys, please ask yeah, get away. Those, get those in. That would be fantastic. And, um, yes. 
Let's have a so, look. So, well, what I might do, I'm just going to pop something else up here. But Now, Aaron knows how to multitask better than me. I That's don't know incredible. About that. He's doing radio, he's doing live stream, he's doing it all. My oh, gosh. Look, the power of the mouse. Look at that. Let's jump into these questions this yes. day because I think um, we've got, well, we've got quite a few in there and I think we have to run them into next week. Let's do that. Yep. yep. All right. So, let's go. So, Mandy from WA, she didn't give an exact area. Come on, Mandy. Give some details. You've Mandy, met Mandy. Have I? Yeah, she oh, came to the workshop. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Then I know who which Mandy we're talking about. Yeah. The lovely Mandy. Okay. How can NLP help me transform my life? That's a pretty open sort of broad mm, question. It yeah. is, and I would say in what way. Yeah. However, if we're looking at it the most generalised way, Mandy, I would say through your words. Your words are your wand. So if you can learn that anything you're saying to yourself, anything that you're saying out loud is what is going to impact you. And I mean, this is more than just words of affirmations because words of affirmations don't always work. But what you're telling yourself, what you're saying and putting out there in terms of, oh, this is really, really hard or I've got this. You know, that in itself mm -hmm. is an incredible way to kind of embrace it from a subconscious level because when you're saying, I've got this, your subconscious mind goes, oh, really? Okay, we've got this. Are but you giving yourself permission perhaps? Yes, okay. that's it, permission. And on the other hand, when you say, oh, my gosh, I can't do this, this is too hard, this is too scary, then the subconscious goes, okay, you know, it's scary. Let's let's put something scary in the way, you know. Um, so, you know, words are your wand, Mandy. I, I cannot express that more. Yeah, and you have a like a, a physical reaction as well. Mm. Like when you feel that you can't do something, you know, your body clamps up, you tighten. Exactly. But you, you're you're not you're not open to it. Mm. So if you if you could charge yourself up and go, yeah, you know, beat yourself on the chest and and say that you can actually do it. Yes. Um, you've also got the physical advantage there, yeah. of, of, and and all the endorphins you're opening into your into your mind and soul. So. Absolutely. Making statements. So that's how I'd answer that. But if you've got a more specific yes. element of how NLP could help you, Mandy, um, I'm all ears. So you could drop it in the comments, in the DMs, yep. um, in Facebook, and I can bring it next week. Beautiful. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. So some of the comments we'll, we can't actually physically see now. We actually see later on. Uh, yep. But I really encourage you to do that, and we'll obviously talk about that in further shows next week. Um, okay, now this is another question. I'm going to jump to Roger from Sydney. Uh, can I use NLP on myself or do I need a practitioner? Cool question. Well, yeah, it is a really cool question. I use NLP on myself all the time. Oh, look at you I'm guys. always NLPing myself, so to speak. Now, I think what you mean, Roger, is if you are not specifically trained – yeah, I think that's what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. So you could use it in a linguistic method so not, and a reframing method. So if you're looking at reframing something that may seem like it's so bad and it's so awful and then just shifting it to actually how else can I look at this? Could I look at this from a different pathway? So right. on that, definitely you can more than definitely help. If you're doing a fast phobia cure on yourself, no, I wouldn't recommend okay. it. Don't do that at home. So you definitely, if you are going through something that is traumatic and it needs really, you know, that powerful, potent kind of way to get through it, you've got to use a practitioner, definitely a professional. Thoroughly agree. Mm. Uh, I, I think that um, I mean, we said this before about, you know, problem shared is a problem halved. Mm. But when, it's, when you try and... When you try and fix yourself, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself because, I mean, basically you are the practitioner and the patient, right? <laughs> so You could talk to yourself. Yeah, you could. Yeah. <laughs> Got me through high school. Um, <laughs> I, I, you, I, I think, yeah, getting actually somebody mm. who knows the game, who understands the techniques, yeah. right? I, I think that makes a big difference. So, Yeah. Unless you're it. asking yourself really good questions, like Anthony Robbins says, you know, the quality of your questions is the quality of your life. So, you know, what can this mean? What, you know, what can I do about it? What can I do to make this better? That sort of thing. Yep. And then you don't feel so weird yeah. About asking yourself or talking to yourself, yeah. Yeah, okay, mm. true, true, cool. All right. Uh, now, I love this. 
because this is an anonymous question, right, mm. that's come through. And I really want to recommend, or not recommend to people, I just want everyone to feel very comfortable in putting through uh, yeah. anonymous questions because I understand, like, honestly, yeah, the world of social media and uh, can feel very, you can leave yourself Exposed. a bit, Yeah, spot on. Yeah. So this is a great way of doing it and we really encourage people to, if they have got something they're not comfy with, Put it through this way. Yeah. So anonymous, anonymous ass, I don't just pop, pop my teeth back in, <laughs> shall I? Uh, okay. Um, even for someone who has been depressed from childhood, is it possible for to find a more positive life using your method? You know what? Um, this person had asked me the question directly. Okay. And I had already thought about the answer and I'm like, I cannot wait to answer this question. Right. And I'm going to answer it with a story. So around about eight years ago, when I first practised in clinic and, you know, people were coming in specifically for trauma, I had a lady who came in and when I was trying to get her to get into a better state of mind and I was asking her those anchoring questions like, remember a time in your life when you felt excited? Remember a time in your life when you felt certain. Mm -hmm. Remember a time in your life when you felt so confident. It could have been like when you're 17 years old. It could have been when you're holding a baby. It could have been with a, a, a puppy dog. Yep. She could not find one thing. No way. I am not joking. And, awesome. you know, I said to her, I said, there's got to be one thing. And she said, Terry, even my conception I was born as a result of rape. Okay. And Whoa. yeah, I know it was really big. And I thought, how do I get around that? That's a huge one. So she sort of suffered from the day she was born, really, because her before, mother yeah. would have, you know, passed on all of that energy yeah. into her. And in the end, what I said to her is, and it is a presupposition of NLP okay. and that is that it's never too late for a happy childhood. Okay. I have never heard that saying before. Please explain. Okay. So it's a bit like the recoding that we talk about with neuro-linguistic programming mm -hmm. where you can go back and reinvent because most times when people are thinking about something from the past, they're never a hundred percent right. Oh, of course not. Because they're filtering. You have to. You, you um, do. You Absolutely. filter and you distort and you you generalise. So it's never exactly right anyway. So since it's never right, why not make something really wrong? You know, why not just make it up and say, well, I'm not going to get this right anyway. If I remember that as that's what's happened what about if I made it up to to be that I was empowered, made it up so that I was feeling good, I was happy, I had a great childhood, everyone loved me, I was encouraged, I had the right role models around me and, you know, you can create everything from your subconscious because let's face it, if it's behind you, it's not, it's not a fact anymore anyway. I'm, I'm torn on that one. I really am. Uh, like I can really genuinely understand what you're saying and I can see the benefit of that. Uh, but I, I mean, I believe in being authentic. So like, creating a false memory to me is, Please do. is, a, is a problem, right? Okay, okay. okay. In, yeah. in my mind. But if you don't have any positive memories, uh, then I can see I can see the practicality of it. I really can, um, and particularly with this person, what they were saying, you know, and to come from such a level of depression... Yeah, it, it would be bad. You'd be living your whole life in darkness, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So perhaps, look, I would very much encourage people uh, to you know, live in in the present right now, okay? That's, that's okay. it, absolutely. One of the favourite analogies to me mm. was, you know, in a car there's a reason why the windscreen is this big and the rear vision mirror is so small, right? Okay, because you're looking forward, right? You're not looking back. That's so good. It really is. And, I mean, as a car guy, I'll just find any way to fit a car into it, right? Yeah. So, but for me that works. Mm. So bad stuff in my past, you mm. know, I, I want to minimise it, okay? You know what I mean? I, That's I just, good. That's I don't good. Wanna, shrink it down. Yeah, shrink it down. Put people okay. in their pyjamas. Put circus music around them. Oh. Get them running around like, and run the Benny Hill show, you know? Oh, that's the best. 
and Steve, ever. You know, Come that, on. That's really what it's about. It's a, it's about almost making it comical. Sure. And, you know, I've got a question on that, though. Let's just say you were constructing a house or doing something and then you found that it was just poorly constructed. Mm -hmm. You were told it's going to collapse yep. in no time. But you were only, like, you know, maybe 10 bricks up. Okay. And you, we were told that it's totally going to fail if you keep going on yep. that same pathway. Would you pull it down and start again? Yes. Same, same. I get it. I you see would, yep. you would actually recreate it you through really would, recoding. Yeah. You would reconstruct it through the power of your mind, and that's all about the recoding. But it's also about putting those people that have hurt you, burnt you, disappointed you shrinking them down to this big. Sure. The, the other way that we do it is we take them back into their baby. Okay. We take them back and we get the person who's been hurt by them to hold them. Yeah. So you're, you're actually holding them really? because you're, you're seeing them at their innocence. Okay. You're seeing them in their helplessness. Yep. And you're also recognising that, hey, hang on a minute, maybe they couldn't give what I expected because they didn't have it to give. I've had that realisation in life. People mm -hmm. who have disappointed me, I've now yeah. gone back and, and had that perspective of going, okay, is this the best they could have given me because mm -hmm. of their own capacity? That's and right. when you look at their capacity, you kind of go, okay, hand in the air, I can now accept how you treated me because, quite frankly, you didn't have the tools to, to do it. Me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. a reframe. Okay. That's how you can reframe it, you know, especially with – because those things are quite dramatic. They're usually the most dramatic when it comes from a relationship where sure. someone's burnt you, yep. someone's really hurt you in a way that is unforgivable in your own mind. Mm -hmm. So by sort of either putting fairy wings on them and shrinking them down and doing the Benny Hill dance – Yep. and seeing them and then speeding up their voice and making it a bit comical. It reframes, but really what I do is I take them back and I do that. The, the house analogy you made is, is mm. really, really, really good because, okay, you're right. I mean, if you're building, there's a reason why, I mean, councils drive everyone nuts, we know that, but, okay, there's a reason why they don't let you build your house in a swamp, okay, unless they, <laughs> they've done the work. Good point. We've got this, the famous house on Armadale Road down in Jandicott that is sinking, sinking, sinking every year, right? Wow. Oh, it's massive, massive. Oh, it's, it's a mansion and it's been sinking every year and there's nothing yeah. else built around it and it's all on its own and it's all, yeah, it is That's a scary. big story to it. But, yeah, but the, the house is, is dropping something like, it's crazy, I don't know, uh, six inches a year or whatever, it's crazy. Does anybody live there? Yeah. Yes, they do. Are you kidding and me? It's a mansion of a place. Sorry. But, yeah, but the thing is, here's what, the, the, I don't know if this is mm. urban myth or if, mm. if it's correct mm. or not, but... Uh, the urban myth is that they actually found out early in construction about the problems and they kept ah. going. Now, how crazy is that? Yes. Because you've got a lifetime of that house being mm -hmm. basically a, a dangerous thing that they know has got a short life. Yeah. Whereas they could have just gone, said, okay, we're three bricks up, let's yep. smash it down, let's build new foundations or let's make it happen. Exactly. But they chose not to. Mm. Uh, and that's in this house's case, I mean, that's it's deemed that it will forever have a doomed existence, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I mean, and, and we and can arch architecturally redesign our brains. Which is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, and I know I'm talking about bricks and mortar compared to our brains, but like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. My, my kind of point was you can rebuild, okay? Yes. Like you have the building blocks. Yeah. Whether they're made of grey matter or they're made of clay, you've yeah. got the building blocks to, to rebuild. I, I think okay. I love that's, that's that. I love that. Here. All right. Now we've got Anita from Perth. Mm -hmm. Anita has asked, uh, okay, I feel like I've spent most of my life doing for others with little appreciation and I neglect myself t to please others. What can NLP do to help me with this frustration? Yeah, I think a lot of us could relate to this. I know I can. And it's where you're helping others at your own expense. Yes. But usually when this happens, you've got to check a few things. You've got to check your own self-worth. You've got to check your own importance. Okay. And you have to get rid of the altruistic side of it. So I know that's a bit of a complex <sighs> word there, but the altruistic side, you know, really is much more healthy when you can 
rebuild yourself like we've been saying, mm-hmm. release what it is that is in within <coughs> you that is giving you that <coughs> poor self-esteem and what's the reason that you have to put other people first? You obviously, like I know I can relate to this myself, you put other people first because you want to be liked. Yeah. You want to be accepted. I've got a thought on this. I don't think there is actually anything that is truly altruistic. I really don't Mm. because there is always, okay, if you do something for someone else, do you feel good doing it? Absolutely. And guess what? You just got paid. All right? Mm. Yeah, payment is not always money, right? Okay, yeah. sometimes you do something. And if you feel, if you give money to a charity, people go, oh, you know, that's an altruistic thing to do. Well, yeah. No, it's not a- at all. You are getting satisfaction for that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's everything right with that. I, I think yeah. that you, everything in life is a transaction. Everything. You're right. right. Yep. 100%. Uh, You're yeah. on the money today, Aaron. Oh, look. Just, I'm, I <laughs> he's, might in the, top, he's in top hat. He's I, in top form. I might have the funny voice and I might be, you know, falling asleep in front of you, but I'm doing all right now. <laughs> uh, I've got I, I've got so many pills in me right now. I'm rattling as I walk, but we'll be good. We'll be good. Um, all right. I, I think that is that comment from Anita. Um, I, I, I feel for you. I really genuinely mm, do. Yep, yeah. Uh, I think that thing that my advice on that would be, very much sometimes it's okay to put yourself first okay yeah. uh, and sometimes always yeah. look at the motives of others look mm-hmm. at the motives of those people who you are serving yeah I get it because I I'm a person who who is of service so I like to give yeah uh, but you've got to give to yourself first you right? really do you got to pour from a full cup yeah oh, I will look and I don't know well, maybe half full yeah exactly boom boom I, I tend to go, and Anita might uh, identify with this, I'm not sure, but mm. I tend to keep pouring, pour, 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 get a little tiny bit left in the gas. Go, yeah. oh, hang on, might be time to refill now. Yes. So that is something that we do wrong. Yeah. If we are a giving person, you we get it wrong, okay? We, yeah. we don't top up as we go. So perhaps that's an important sort of lesson for your life. To, yeah, yeah. Um, that, you know, maybe before you get to that level where you, you've taken a hit, maybe just a little maintenance on the way might be. Yeah, absolutely. Can agree more. I'm sure Anita's going to be really happy with that answer, and you've met so. Anita too. Well, there you go. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, now I'm putting faces to names, so that's great. Uh, Chris from New Zealand. No, I don't think I met Chris. Uh, no, you haven't up. met. You were Chris. supposed to. Well, okay. He well. was due to come to the last workshop. Oh well, New Zealand. But is... now he's back to New Zealand. Yeah, it's quite a swim. Yes. To come over. So, <laughs> all right, uh, get your floaties on there, Chris, because yep. uh, we've got a question there here <laughs> from you now. He says, I am in my late 50s, recently moved back to New Zealand and I feel lost and unmotivated. What can I do to break through this confusion? Confusion. Confusion. That's interesting. interesting. So what comes first? And I did have a little chat with Chris earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? And whether it's the, you know, really your lack of motivation is probably the effect but what is the cause is the confusion. So if the confusion, you know, they say that with confusion after comes a breakthrough. So you can look at it as the way that I wanted to actually talk about the gur because the gur is something that is really associated with turning pain to power, turning your story into your glory. But I love my acronyms, right? You now do. with the gur, it is G triple R with a R on the end. So it's G four R's. The first G stands for gold. So if I said to you, digging for gold is around your big adversity. Okay. So the pain in your life is your gold mine. Years ago, completely would have disagreed, right? <laughs> completely would have disagreed. Now I agree. Like, as I say, pain and adversity makes you. It, it makes you. It makes yeah. you who you are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it could also break you. So some mm. people will use it and they'll use it as an excuse to fold. And I get it, right? Like, mm. you know, it's hard. But especially if it's really hard adversity. But, yeah, without it, you... You're never going to extend yourself. It's like, mm. okay, we, we, we go on so often about here we free speech, free speech, free speech here in Italy, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I believe in it. I, I believe mm. in the fact that you've got to hear yeah. things that you don't agree with. 
Right? You Absolutely. need to. You've got you've, to. You've got to be honest and true to yourself. Mm. Yeah. Speak your truth. And, I'm all about that. And, yep. and, and hear others mm. speak their truth, right? Yeah. Um, the truth. Mm. Like have that level of conflict because without it you won't actually grow. You will just mm. again, you'll fall into these patterns. And I would sort of suggest when it comes to Chris, like I, I mean, I, um, as far as you know, moving back to New, New Zealand and feeling unmotivated, you know, I, I would probably encourage him to get out there and probably speak to other people, right? Okay, because yeah. okay, being with other people means surrounded by other people and the energy of that helps with the motivation. Absolutely, 100%. And keep your vision on the bullseye because yeah, I know true. he really wants to help people himself. He wants oh, to study. Man. He wants to become a practitioner of NLP. Gotcha. So he can't get his teeth in, into it at the moment because right. he feels like he's kind of, you know, really snowed under with all of these commitments. But remember your G is for gold, so that's digging for gold that is your pain. Okay. The first R is about recognising, recognising what it is that's causing your pain. The second R is about releasing it. Okay. So you've got to be able to release it. The third R is about revolutionising. All right. So that's when your pain becomes your power. Sure. Your story becomes your glory. So let's just say, for example, you were closed down at some point in your life sure. and, you know, your freedom was taken away from you. Let's just say that as an example, right? As an example. And then you become a man of freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. So do you see how that happens? Completely agree. Because, okay, yeah, yeah. if you weren't aware of the pain or the adversity of it, yeah. you're not going to act on it, right? But when, you, when this happens to you... It fires you up and it can actually make you, again, turn a negative into a positive, okay? Mm. Turn that negative fire yeah. into a fire of positivity, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, you, you, yeah, if you're not aware, you'll, you won't act. So the, these adversities, these things that happen to you are, are a blessing in disguise. They do happen for you, not to you. I love that. And, you know, they say that, like, for example, rich, wealthy people – are usually first generation. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You know, it's it's one of those things where adversity struck. Mm. You know, like even success, Tony Robbins, you know, never had, couldn't celebrate Christmas, oh. really was in poverty for most of his childhood. Gotcha. He turned that around. But so did Andrew Carnegie. Okay. You know, the man of steel, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was, you know, had a single mum, but never had any money. Mm -hmm. So he had that. He turned his pain into his power. Okay. So that was his gold. And, and I just want to throw this mm. out that, okay, this doesn't have to be about financial success. No. This could be about not. emotional success. It could be about social success. It could be about just feeling good in your heart that you're yeah. actually doing, doing your life purpose. Yeah, that's right? rich. Yeah, that's rich. Mm. I just want to, to make that clear because a lot of us, and certainly me growing up, I mm. grew up and I equated success with money. Like, mm. to be successful, you had to be financially successful. Um, and after adversity, mm. I now realise that that is so not true. You know, you've got to find your life purpose. And my purpose will be different to yours, and yours yeah. and yours and yours and yours, right? Yeah. That, that's how the world works. And that's how your greatness emerges too. Have we got time for a story? Okay, I was about to say we were sneaking um, one more question, but no, go for the story. Can we go for the story? Let's go for the story. Nobody really wants money. Okay, hang on. Don't yeah, know. Yeah. I've met okay. a few. So, right. you know, you just sort of prompted this. But okay. everybody might say, oh, I need more money. I want to be rich. <laughs> I want to have wealth. But it's not really about, like, if you had a billion dollars stashed away in your shed or in your cupboard, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have anything to do. That money couldn't work if you weren't using it. It True. would just be sitting there. However... It might make you feel different. It would make you feel safer, I would suggest. Exactly, exactly, right? Yep. So quickly, a story about Bill. He was okay. in an absolute depression. Okay. And he was really worried about his life. He'd lost his job, sat on the couch every day in darkness, and one day the phone rang. Okay. His wife answers the phone and she says, did you get a lottery ticket from down the road the other day? Yeah, yeah, I did. He says, can you call out the numbers? Bingo. Right. He won 
the lottery. Now, he goes down, him and his wife. Now, all the time, now, he didn't go out. He hadn't been out for about a month. He was right. just hiding, hibernating. And um, he jumped straight in the car. Do you think he was going to stay home for this one? He jumped straight in the car and all the way down the road, all he talked about and all he saw in his mind was the vision, what he's going to do with the money, how he's going to help people. He got down and the man says, look, I'm sorry, you have to wait for the money to come through. Yeah. So you're going to have to wait probably about three weeks. Do you know what happened in those three weeks? No. The guy called up his best mate. He said, let's go into a partnership. And they created this epic business, right. went out with confidence, borrowed the money, had that kind of certainty, boldness and courage, all because he knew the money was coming. Right. But the money wasn't there. No. Anyway, as the story goes, he, they start up the business and it booms. Okay. I mean, you know, this guy and his mate have got so much energy. They're like a magnet attracting all right. these people, right? So before they knew it, they were able to pay back the loan. Turns out he never won the lottery ticket. They were doing a actual test on him. No way. But it changed everything. But he didn't have a dollar in his – they never gave him a dollar. Right. He didn't have any more money than he had when he was depressed he and laying the on the couch. But he had the confidence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, never pull that trick on me because I will go postal. <laughs> uh, but all right, we, we've we actually run over time, but I do want to fit this last question in if I may. Because cool. as I say, I do apologise for running over time, but that's that's life. Uh, because we've got a question from Bridget in the USA. And uh, uh, we've got a, such a wonderful audience in the US, and, and I'd love to sort yeah, of yeah. look after as many yep. people, people as we can. So, uh, Bridget, she asks, I'm feeling very alone and struggling to get through daily life while taking care of my husband. Uh, it's depleting me. Can you help? <sighs> I sent you an audio message today, Bridget, and I feel you, girlfriend. I feel you. And, you know, like I was saying to Aaron before, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Yeah. So if you're giving so much to your husband and you're taking away from what your passion is, what your purpose is, what you're doing is in the long run you're taking away from your husband. This is about, you know, setting boundaries and being able to put yourself first and really going into some self-care, looking after yourself, self-love, self-care and knowing that without that you giving to your husband 99% of the time, which I think my community know that, that I'm in a bit of that situation right now as well. But there comes a time when you've got to step back. You've got to say, where's my sanctuary? You know, what can I do to fill my cup? What can I do to create a life where even if it means you're going out and you're doing your own thing? Because when you come back, you're going to have so much more to give to him. So my number one answer to that, Bridget, would be you've got to set boundaries and you've got to fill your cup with self-love, self-worth and do the things you love. So true. Mm -hmm. So Boundaries are the most incredibly important thing. My word, as human beings do, we do that badly. Um, we do, don't we? We do very badly indeed. But yeah. you know what? We're all a bit of a work in progress. We're getting better as we go. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been involved in the show. And uh, I did notice before, uh, we seem to be popping out to a lot of different places here, not just mm. obviously the the, uh, the normal site. So uh, thank you, everybody who's sharing. Really, really appreciate that. Pops out all over the place. And uh, literally, uh, we, we were just talking about a, a show that uh, we did a few weeks ago and massive audience. So uh, it's it feels very special to be able to touch as many people as possible. And uh, as I say, thank you, Bridget, for that last question. Uh, and thank you to all of the people all over the world, uh, whether it be Australia, New Zealand, uh, Bridget from the US, uh, you know, people in Europe. Uh, so many people are getting involved and, uh, and it's just nice to know we're making a bit of a difference because, um, you know, well, life is life is better when people are happier, quite frankly. Absolutely. All right, exactly. time to get out of here, though. Uh, yep. No real last-minute thoughts. Quite frankly, the last-minute thought is just, you know, be kind to each other. Yeah. Um, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. In the meantime, too, don't forget you can watch these replays whenever you like or if you mm. want to listen to them in the old audio version, uh, they will be available on edgeradioaustralia.com. That's edgeradioaustralia.com. If you want to... Um, 
be very helpful uh, and like and subscribe and do all those things that all Absolutely. the YouTube people like you to do. Yeah. It makes such a difference. It really does with the algorithms. It's all about the algorithm. So if you could do that, it would be great. But otherwise, the show will be replayed on Edge Radio Australia. At what time on Sunday? 3 p.m. Oh, look, get into it. It's Edge Radio Australia, the genius zone. Thank you for joining us on another empowering episode of our show where we have explored through this various topic along with all the exciting new topics that we bring every week to enhance your personal mastery of excellence. Now, I'd love you to do me a favour. In fact, be part of the Legacy One Million that I have in the vision for 2028. If you know someone who really would benefit from this recording, from this episode, please share. Share it with them. And when you subscribe, you get notified every week of our episode as soon as it drops. So let's do that legacy thing. Let's share, let's care, let's enrich. And I look forward to bringing you another week of the most enriching content. So until next time, stay inspired, stay awesome, and keep on mastering your excellence.